watching my good fiend Roger Walker on Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today I'm on episode two of Talking Horror with, this time with Gabby over from the Instagram horror community. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Awesome. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great as well. So did you see the first episode with Horrorhead? Yes, I did. I was so excited. I was, because I'm subscribed to you. So I go through my YouTube and then I see her face pop up. I was like, what? <laughs> right? So it was very cool. It was a really good interview. And I like hearing all like talk and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's like weird to see, see these Instagrammers uh, on YouTube because you're, you're so used to seeing them. Like just a yeah. picture of them on Instagram and now they're talking. Yeah. You can yeah, talk. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> yeah, but you also have a YouTube channel. What, um, how did that come to be? Did you have a, an Instagram first or a YouTube first? Um, I, well, my Instagram kind of started just like personal, like for memes and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I didn't really put thought into it. And then I started doing YouTube and uh kind of probably just like how you started youtube i love movies i just want to talk about movies and i like to watch other people talk about movies and i you know started doing that and then kind of just started matching my instagram with my youtube content and i don't really post too much on youtube anymore just because it's a lot of work oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm sure you know like a you know 20 minute video takes like 20 hours to film and like edit it <laughs> right. and finding the perfect clip to go with it or editing thumbnails. It's a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I just, yeah. I just don't have time. The same thing with like Instagram it to edit like a picture. I'll be on my phone for like an hour trying <laughs> to make the perfect filter. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm sure no one cares. It's just me be wanting it to look nice. Just a perfectionist, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you say that uh, YouTube came first for you and, and then you kind of moved over to Instagram uh, because a lot of times you hear people li like Horrorhead, you know, she's going to YouTube now as well. Um, and I think you hear that a lot more. But for me, it was also, um, I also started with YouTube. And at first I just dump my thumbnails on Instagram but if people want to look on uh, look at thumbnails on Instagram um, they just go to YouTube you know yeah <laughs> so now I'm kind of starting to do the same thing uh, most people on Instagram do in the horror community like you you know just taking a picture mm -hmm. of a collection and and editing with that perfect filter <laughs> <laughs> yes it's so cool because people are like what do you, how do you edit your pictures or you know what do you do and I'm like, I love to help. Like, if you want to know how, like, I'll make sure to send you the, the apps that I use or whatever. Because it's fun, you know, <laughs> seeing yeah. other people kind of. I used to post, like, my YouTube thumbnails. And then you kind of realize people don't really like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, mm, no. <laughs> and for those two extra views you get, you know, it's not worth it in the long run anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I see a lot of... Um, people like on TikTok and stuff, they want to start like YouTube channels. But I don't think people realize like how much it's it's more work than I think any of the social media platforms. Yeah, I think so too. Especially because... if you're gonna do it from your phone, like it oh, can be right. very tedious. Like you really have to have a computer, like a camera. It costs more money. And and especially in the beginning because then you need the money for uh for the setup, but then you don't yeah. earn money with, with YouTube. <laughs> Yes, I, I monetize on YouTube, but I think I've made about like two or three hundred dollars in like the three years I've been on here. Right. You have to have a lot of views. So people are like, if you make money off there, I'm like, I think I make 10 cents off the video. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not I'm not even much. monetized yet. Oh, um, you'll get there. It, it took me a while. And so... I never thought it was going to happen, but it did. And then I was like, well, now I have 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just knowing that you, you could do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I do have like a Teespring, you know, and I made oh. like the first month, all of my, um, all of my viewers started buying my merch 
you know, now it's kind of yeah. dying down, you know, <laughs> because everyone has the merch now anyways, the, yeah. the merch they wanted. Um, mm-hmm. But once I get monetized, that will also, um, because once you get monetized, you can also do like a subscription thing, you know? So people get yeah. these extra things. I hope to make, um, make enough money with that so I can, can just quit my job that I have besides work or, or besides school and, and, and slash for pepper now, you know? Yeah. Um, do you have a Patreon or anything like that? Oh, uh, not yet, but I want to do that through YouTube because then you can also do these, um, you can th- design your own emojis that people can just put yeah. exclusive on your own videos. You know, I love I, that. It's very cool. I've, and like on the live chats too, you can like, um, and it's not like Twitch, you know, they want you to like, watch people's live streams and you can like tip on their live stream right. or something. like a super you chat buy, yes you buy the sticker or something right. i'll do that every now and then because i'm um, just to see it like pop up i'm like oh it's cool <laughs> right it's it's crazy to think that uh, people would uh would actually spend money on you you know yeah it is i'm like uh <laughs> kind of like my patreon i was like i don't know what else to put on here <laughs> right i, I also so, feel guilty you know because i want to i want to give it all back double you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yes i tried to do like giveaways and stuff because i was sometimes oh, i yeah. feel weird i feel like i have a lot of stuff <laughs> and I just feel kind of awkward so i'm like oh, i'll do like giveaways and you know help other people get some things like giving back you know right so <laughs> yeah that's that's so relatable for me you know because when, uh, whenever people are like oh i want to send you like a blu-ray or something i'm like no you don't have to man you really don't oh, yeah but it, i think it's so cool because like when people have sent me stuff like i'll always remember it like i'll, I'll remember oh like, yeah so and so sent me this even though it's been like you know a couple of years later I just always, or some people write you like little notes and I'll keep them all. Like oh, little cards yeah, yeah. and stuff. I'm like, oh. I still have really like a Day of the Dead Blu-ray that someone sent me that I, I can't play here because of the region codes. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that, I definitely have made that mistake of buying the, that was kind of before I knew what like region, right. the different regions. I thought it was all the same and I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> And those region free Blu-ray players, they're like really expensive. So. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't get region codes either because you also have region free Blu-rays. So why yeah. not make all of them region free? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's too much. I'm like, okay. <laughs> because Y'all blocked me on there. <laughs> right. Because on the Amazon page, you can, you can see in the description like region A and I'm like, is that America, y- Europe or... or- yeah i don't know I china or something the, the little like there'll be like a little 18 it's like a red circle at the bottom and that's how i can usually tell it's oh, not right. american i'm like yeah the cover doesn't look american <laughs> weird. yeah speaking of international stuff i saw you um bought like a tourist trap poster from belgium that was really yeah. cool did i and then i bought another one um savage streets it's like this yes yeah that movie. was that was the one i forgot yeah. what, what the other one i saw and yeah, it's yeah, so cool it's, because um because the tagline is actually in dutch um oh. so i actually know what it says <laughs> oh no way yeah that is so cool yeah i was trying to google i'm like what language do people in belgium <laughs> speak i'm not sure i don't want to sound like you know, like dumb when I talk about it and I saw like, cause I don't know if you know who Horrible Reviews is. He's Dutch. He's like this, um, you should look him up. He does like the most disturbing movies ever made. And oh, like, right. he's, he's like a really big YouTuber, super cool. And he's Dutch and he'll sometimes talk about like Dutch movies. I think he lives, I'm not sure where, but he said, like, kind of over there, there really isn't a lot of horror. It's, oh, no, absolutely not. It's Yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm more of a misfit here than, than, than you are in America, really. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Like, and then to buy horror movies, you know, they're so expensive because they're not oh, yeah. available there. I was just like, wow, I never thought about it like that, you know. Yeah, like, just yesterday, I was looking at some Aliens 
um, like the books, you know, the novels, because I'm kind of mm-hmm. wanting to read that entire series. And I was just looking on Abbey Books. And I saw one for like $2, you know, they're not super rare. So put it in the basket. All of a sudden it says $77 total, like shipping oh. was that expensive. <laughs> Oh gosh, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Luckily on Amazon, <laughs> stuff, it's not too bad. Do I have Amazon Prime over there? Yeah, yeah, but like the, um, uh, what what is it called? Like the, um, the things you profit from aren't like enough for me to pay monthly. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Exactly. Like I'll because I don't order that much either, so I'll just pay shipping. You know, instead of paying that monthly yeah. thing and whatever else <laughs> i used to try to cheat i used to like um i would just order it and then i would get the like free trial <laughs> shipping and then I'd just cancel it like right away after my stuff came right and then eventually amazon was like yeah y'all can't do that anymore you have to pay. <laughs> i'm like well now that i have it um you get kind of spoiled you're like why can't everything come in two days <laughs> <laughs> right. you're like, I have to wait longer than that. I get like kind of annoyed. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, welcome to my world. I have to wait like yeah. two weeks every time. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. No, but um, in Belgium, like the most of the northern side, um, they speak Dutch, which the northern mm-hmm. side is against the Netherlands, and then um, more of the southern side to like France, um, mm-hmm. they speak French there. So. It's kind of confusing because sometimes you just don't know if you can you can talk Dutch to people or, or you have to uh, or you're wow. far enough to speak French to them. That's really cool. I would you know just to like watching like a lot of foreign horror movies. I just have a more appreciation for different languages, especially like French horror. That's like probably my favorite. And you get kind of used to hearing it too, I feel like. I, I couldn't speak it, but I kind of, you know, start picking things up because I watch so much. And I'm like, oh, I, would lo- I would love to go over there. And Très bon. Just... Très bon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're just, I feel like foreign horror is like up here. <laughs> right. And American horror is still kind of like, oh. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I uh, recently, I'm not too much into foreign horror, actually. I should get into more of them. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, well, I guess for a Dutch person, American horror is foreign horror. But, um, you know, n- besides American horror movies, I don't really watch any others. Um, not even really Dutch horror movies, because we don't really have that many here. Um, yeah. But recently, I saw Pieces, which I guess you could say <laughs> is a sort of a foreign horror movie. <laughs> yeah, that movie is is something. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, a lot of the the older '80s movies are like like dubbed over. It's and so it's- weird too because you can tell that they're <laughs> speaking English, but why are they not just using the original audio? <laughs> yeah, and I'm always confused. Like, how do their voices actually sound? Like, <laughs> right? It's because it kind of doesn't match their face, like their voice. And it's like, <laughs> what? But yeah, it's so confusing. <laughs> it's so confusing. Because if you if you see their mouth moving differently, you know, okay, they're talking Spanish and they dub yeah. the American version over it. <laughs> but you can tell that they're talking American, so why do they just <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Use that it's audio. Kind of, I think that like Dario Argento, um, the the guy who made Suspiria, he wanted like Italian actors and American actors, but like none of them could speak the other language. <laughs> so he, whenever they were like in the same scene, he was just like, just say it. And so someone had to like still translate like what they were saying or it's just like kind of, and you can see in some of the scenes, it's a little confusing because of like the dub. And I'm just <laughs> like, I can't, I would like the lips are moving and they're saying something else. I'm just like, I can't look away. <laughs> <laughs> like oh it's a little (laughs) but I kind of like um when I watch foreign movies I just watch it in the the normal language I'll just read the subtitles right because I just hate that like (laughs) dub version yeah it's just like bad I'm like no (laughs) 
Yeah, I always feel like audio is more important than, than um, you know, image because um, as, also with like YouTube and stuff, if your if your camera looks like like shit, but your microphone is great, I mean, people will watch the uh, watch you. I mean, they can use your videos as podcasts or something. But if your audio mm -hmm. sucks, I mean, they can't even understand what you're saying. So don't even bother yeah. at that point. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. I've been really wanting to get um like a, a microphone, like a Yeti microphone or something like that. Um, just because like when I film on my phone, which I'm on right now, I can I just like the the better audio. That's what I like to listen to. If somebody has bad audio on YouTube, even though the video might look really interesting. I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm if good. I wanna make yeah, I'm it was, sometimes it's like the white noise sound or something like right. all distracting or a lot of clicking on the camera. Oh man. Like, like their mom is just <laughs> with a vacuum cleaner in another room, you know, and the dog is barking <laughs> and dad screaming and shit, you know? <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I know my dogs are always going crazy. It's kind of, that's kind of <laughs> why it's hard for me to film because if they hear one car, they're both like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to film. <laughs> Please like, be quiet. You could use it as like a humor point. Like you're trying to say something and you get interrupted by the dogs. But <laughs> after 10 times, it's not funny anymore. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. That's kind of why I'm just like, I like Instagram because you don't have to <laughs> talk right. or anything. Right. Very easy. Yeah, because with YouTube, you also have to make a thumbnail. Um, oh, yeah. Which is, which is like a photo. But mm -hmm. for Instagram, you also need to make a photo, but without the editing and the video and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now they're like doing um, like IGTV and, you know. Oh, making... yeah. But the format's like a lot different. You have to like make it a certain like long ways. <laughs> and YouTube's more like this way. I'm like, it's just, I tried to do one. And I was like, yeah, it's too much work. <laughs> 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 like for like, you know, five people to actually see it. I was like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I was I'm always good. so bad at YouTube thumbnails. I always would forget to do one. So, you know, I was like, well, I'll just use an old picture or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get dressed all again. Right. So. <laughs> so what would you say um, is your favorite horror movie? I know you love Chopping Mall, so. Is yes, I do. I think probably my number one is the thing i feel like if i i don't know if i could only watch like one movie for the rest of my life it would probably be that and then number two would probably be choppy mall because i just i just love it so much and it's super <laughs> cheesy it's like a perfect 80s horror movie right it's been so long since i've seen it but i really need to rewatch it yeah, I, I feel like when people ask for, like, movie recommendations, I always kind of go for, like, 80s horror. Yeah. And some people are like, oh, it's too cheesy for me. And I'm just like, that's, like, kind of my taste of horror is just... Right. You know, I'm like, I can't, kind of like Intruder, you know, I love Intruder. Oh, yeah. And so I'm like, it's a little cheesy. It's, like, you know, really good and, like, bloody and stuff, but it's a little cheesy. And so that's why people are like, oh, well, I don't want to watch something like that. I want something really <laughs> scary. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I think they're really scary in certain parts. So yeah, but, for me, yeah. it's for me, it's just like if, if I can see some blood and guts, I mean, I'm happy, you know, if, if yeah. it doesn't scare me, I don't care if it's cheesy, <laughs> I'll probably love it more. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. an intruder when, when, when they're fighting, um, with, um, What's the guy's name? I always forget his name. I always get him confused with Tim's character, but the um, the guy with the leather jacket, you know? Um, oh, yeah. You know? The, like, mean guy, the stalker boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when he's in the store and the, and the employees start fighting, there are, like, camera <laughs> movements where, where they're, like, this with the camera, you know? <laughs> yes! Oh, but that guy, the scene, they're, like, the punches, too. <laughs> you can, like, hear how fake they sound. It's like, pa. <laughs> yeah, I was like oh okay <laughs> but I just I love it you know it's like and everyone plays it so seriously too like <laughs> yeah just makes it even more funnier 
Yeah, I interviewed the, um, the final girl from the movie. Um, oh, cool. And she was so nice. You could just tell that, that um, talking about filming the, uh, the movie just brought back so many great memories. I think they had a lot of fun filming that in the supermarket. <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. Like, I I love like, you know, like Kelly Maroney from Chopping Mall. She's like one of the blonde girls. Oh, like, yeah. I had a chance to talk to her. And it's so cool because you're like, I love you. I love your movie so much. And then to actually like get to talk to them. And you're like, I feel like with celebrities now, like they wouldn't give you like the time of day, you know? <laughs> Right. But most of them are not like really even on social media or they're very like elusive. So you never have the opportunity to like tell them like, hey, I love your movie. Like, you know, and I think it's really cool, especially from like 80s actors. I think they're it's so cool to see them like on Instagram and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. They're very mm -hmm. they're very accessible, which was surprising to me. Like the first yeah. time. My first, you know, big interview, I would say, um, will be with David Howard Thornton from uh, Terrifier. And when he yeah, replied, I was like, that. when he replied, I was like, holy shit, he, he's actually replying to my messages. But now I know so many more people um, that actually play in bigger films just reply to their messages on Instagram, which I just yeah. never expected at first. Yeah, no, exactly. I think it's because they just genuinely, like, you know, they like to talk about their movies and they appreciate their fans and it's just so cool. And I, it makes me like, like the movie even more and just really appreciate right. them. Cause there are people like, there's normal people who wouldn't give you the time of day, you know, <laughs> and be like, Oh, I'm not going to reply. And to have like, you know, this really great actor, actress actually like talk to you. You're right. Like, it's wow. <laughs> amazing. Yes, definitely. And it's um, one of the, he's like the music composer for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. His name oh, is yeah. And he's so sweet. Like he's always like talking about his movie and like talking to fans and, you know, sending stuff out. And it's just like, oh my God, like you're, that's one of my favorite movies ever too. And so to actually talk to somebody from that movie, I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> It's that movie cool is one. in my top five for sure. <laughs> yes, I saw that um, at the theater, like on the big screen. And since then, I've just, I love it so much. And yeah. A lot of people love it too. It's, it's kind of hard to find on VHS. So it yeah, goes for I mean, a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, I don't think the, um, the one with like the... I think the MGM cover, I think that one is pretty easy to get, yeah. but like the one, the best cover with like the, yeah. the earth yeah. spinning, <laughs> that one is I just have, so good. I have two of the covers and like, that's the one that I don't have. And it's, I, I'm like, I should have bought it like, you know, two, three years ago when it was like $60. Now it's like a hundred and yeah. dollars. I think his uh, VHS have just gotten like so popular and they're just getting like more and more expensive and it kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, can we make it uncool? That way the prices <laughs> will go down. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, uh, every time I want, it's like, I really want another, um, another copy of chopping mall. Cause mine's like all messed up the cover and I've lost so many eBay bids. Cause I'm just like, I can't spend like a hundred and something dollars on, one movie that I feel like you should be able to find it at like a Goodwill or a thrift shop or yeah. something. And kind of for a lot of people find their movies, they just get lucky, you know? Yeah. What usually so, stops me with like buying really expensive uh, VHS tapes or, or novels is like, do you realize how many other novels or VHS tapes I could buy with this that are movies oh, that yeah. I also really love, but <laughs> You know, no, just because this one is rare, I wanted more, I believe. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And um, I just feel like, I don't know, I'm always like, it's $100 if I get that, or I can get like five other movies, you know? Right. And you're kind of like, well, you know, what do you do? And I'm not really like, um, it's kind of the only thing I like to spend money on is like my horror stuff. 
I'm not really big on anything else other than that. So I kind of try to give myself a limit, like, don't go over, <laughs> you know? Sometimes I look back on my, like, eBay purchases. I was like, yeah, that was a really bad month. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, because you can't just buy anything for, like, a dollar. Everything's, like, 20, 30 something dollars. Right. And you're just like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe save a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but one day, you know, you'll find it at a Goodwill or something. Yeah, I'm that, sure. that <laughs> for me, that's not really an option because over here in thrift stores, we, we don't even have VHS tapes anymore. Oh, so. <laughs> no. oh gosh, that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have like, um, like a small collection of VHS tapes, but uh, I'm happy with what I have. Uh, yeah. Actually, one of my friends was uh, the he bought uh, Intruder VHS tape for me, like on eBay, uh, and he sent it to his own house so he wouldn't have to pay shipping. And I met him in in New York, and he's from New Jersey, and he forgot to bring the VHS tape. Oh no! God, I hate when that happens. <laughs> right. I was. He was in the train. I was like. Hey, did you bring the VHS tape too, by the way? And he was like, um, VHS tape? <laughs> he oh, totally forgot about no. it. It's probably and dumped yeah. in some corner now. <laughs> yeah, and that's because that tape goes for, like, quite a lot. Um, but I know, like, the, I don't know if you have, like, the Blu-ray of it. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, the the best version of the movie. It has, that like, movie. all the, that has, like, all the is, it's a great feature. It's a really, really great special features and, and um, good quality, very good quality. Um, you mean the Synapse Films uh, version, right? Yeah, yes, I think so. I have yeah. like somewhere over there. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like know, the there's so the, many. The, somewhere the over here. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like double stacked or whatever, so... <laughs> Right, right. I should probably get a better like system, like alphabetical order or something. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me grab it. I have, I have mine right over here. Of course, I know right away where Intruder <laughs> yeah, is. <laughs> Got to get that one as quick as possible. This one. Yes, that's the one. Yes. Yeah, that one is. I love it. It's amazing, amazing release. Yeah, what would you say yeah. is your favorite um company that releases Blu-rays? Like you know, Scream Factory and Arrow and Santa <gasps> Films. Mm, I probably would say I just I love the arrow videos but they are kind of like very expensive um you, you'll probably pay like 25 to like 30 dollars and I feel like the Scream Factory they've had a lot of good movies and you can get them for like you know 10 12 dollars um sometimes like 15 or 20 if they're like brand new but I think they're a little more accessible because they sell them at I've seen them at Walmart, at like Best Buy, you know, they're all on Amazon and they have really good artwork and they do the, um, like the original artwork and then the like special, because sometimes I don't really like the, the new artwork <laughs> and so I'll just switch it to the, like the original VHS artwork. Which one and do you know off the top of your head, which one you don't like from the special artwork? Oh, my bloody Valentine. I have it like, I don't like this one. Why not, <laughs> it, though? It looks like a fly. Like, <laughs> like the eye. And that's because this one was really expensive because it like came with like a poster and it was like a, it was like around Valentine's Day. So it was like $35. And I just gave away, it came with two posters and they both were like, no <laughs> i just gave them away but this is like the original artwork right and to me that looks like a lot cooler yeah like the eyes add something creepy to it yeah and it's just like very simple and this one i just think it looks like they have a lot of like all these hearts and stuff and i was just like mm, no i don't think so <laughs> kind of <laughs> so looks I like switched it over <laughs> Kind of looks like Ant Man three or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm like I don't know who designed this, but I'm just not a fan of it. 
but yeah, it just always bothered me. Um, I paid like extra for like the slip cover and the posters and <laughs> I was like, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm going to go with Arrow by release because mm -hmm. I love the special features they have. Um, like I watched the Mania or the Frankenhooker special features. It was oh, just so yeah. much fun. And I actually took notes and now I'm doing this new series on my channel. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm doing a self promo here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's basically like the, the history of, you know, and it's, it's most of it is just taken from that Blu-ray uh, and, and from mm -hmm. the Blu-rays from Arrow. And I did one for Frank and Ocran pieces now. Um, oh, wow. Basically all info is taken from that, but instead of watching, hours of interviews you're watching a four minute video by me <laughs> yeah no i'm 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 not like a special features kind of person unless it's like a movie i really like right i'll watch the special features because i just never like i don't know never really got into it but i'll go straight to youtube and just like watch all the reviews or all the like people's thoughts and stuff so because, you know, I just like to hear other people talk about it. So I like that you're doing that because, you know, you just make a, <laughs> yeah. a short video and it's like, I'll watch that, you know? Like, Long story short, basically. <laughs> yeah, all the, the good stuff. And I love Frankenhooker. Oh, my God, that movie is hilarious. <laughs> it is so, like, it, again, like a cheesy 80s movie, you know, but it's so It's good. so much fun. <laughs> Yes, definitely. I did like um, a cosplay as like Frankenhooker one time and it was just like so cool. I never get to like dress up for Halloween because I never go anywhere. So sometimes I'll just dress up in my house and like take a picture <laughs> be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, if, 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 I was, um, if I was a female, that would be my cosplay. I know that for sure. <laughs> The purple wig and like that purple bra <laughs> god it's just like i feel like movies like that don't get made anymore you know <laughs> no they really don't or at least they don't get a, a wide a worldwide release and if it's like some small thing that no one has heard of it's it's just kind of like i can't really talk about it on my channel because it'll probably just get 30 views or something and that's just not yeah. worth it you know <laughs> so then i don't even bother to watch it <laughs> How long have you been doing YouTube for? Uh, I think like July 2018, I changed it to, um, um, I changed my name to Slasher Pepper. Before that, it was actually like a Spider-Man channel. <laughs> and, oh, no um, way. Yeah, I made like edits so that it, it, that it was funny, you know, like, um, you know, I would, I would switch up the words and it would make it seem like they were saying different things and it, it would be pretty funny, but uh, I don't think those videos are online anymore. But then in March, 2019, I did a, an interview with, with an author of um, like a Nightmare on Street book, which I'm still good friends with. His name is David, oh. David Bergantino. You might've seen him on the channel on and off. Oh um, yeah, cool. And basically, I think since that video, like after that video, I really did like more consistent concepts, you know, because then it was like one time we would do Spider-Man videos and the other time horror stuff, but then it really turned into like a horror channel, you know? So Yeah, um, definitely. And I think it's like a lot of people that start YouTube, they kind of like start doing something and then just kind of find what they really want to do. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know your audience kind of like switches, you know, <laughs> you're like, um, from Spider-Man to like horror movies or like, okay. <laughs> I still have like one friend that, that was also a YouTuber. Um, that was actually the one that got the intruder Blu-ray for me. Um, uh, so, so I'm still, I still talk of him on and off. So that's great. But other than that, I really don't talk with anyone anymore from, from that era. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but but when I really started doing YouTube is actually like 2014, 2013. Uh, I did uh, oh. that was, I mean, I was still a little kid, so I did like Lego Lego stop motion videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome! It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it, I, I do think, although looking back at back at the videos, they're really shitty. I do think they've helped me 
that really prepared me now because now I'm just comfortable in front of a camera. You know, when people ask me, how are you so comfortable in front of a camera? How do I get that? I'm, I'm, I really can't give advice because I don't even remember a time when I wasn't comfortable in front of a camera, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I think that's a lot of people there. Um, it's it's kind of weird, you know, when you film yourself because you kind of like have to scrutinize like how you look or what you're saying. And so people are like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to talk to nobody, basically. Yeah. And yes. I didn't even realize that anymore. I'm 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 that much of a psycho now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before I started doing YouTube, I would just like talk out loud to like myself, like like as if I was doing a YouTube like video and then just like, you know, say like I'm gonna do this and then I got this and like, you know, kind of just like preparing myself because yeah, it can be very intimidating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put yourself out there, you know. So, yeah, but because questions. because I've been doing this for so long, it, it really doesn't bother me at all anymore. And I barely That's even get hate comments, actually. Um, usually when I do get hate comments, it's it's oriented at the person I'm interviewing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, and usually they're... <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, now why are you watching his interview? <laughs> Yeah, there's like, I think the, the troll comments on YouTube, like they really did get to me because I think just like as a, like a female who's oh, in yeah. the horror community, they just like attack you because it, it kind of like gatekeeping, I guess. And I think it's kind of like the same with like, um, like women who like metal or something. And oh yeah. They metal, like, it's worse. Yeah, Way they're like there. your top favorite bands and name all their <laughs> songs and albums. Like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> if if I see someone on the street wearing a Metallica shirt and just <laughs> by looking at that person, I know he probably doesn't listen to it. I'm not gonna make myself pissed because I know I'm only fucking my own men mental health up by being angry at every single thing I see on the street. So I'm just like. Yeah. You know, if, if, if they like the shirt, but don't listen to it, that's fine. Everyone should just wear what they like, you know? Why yes. would I get pissed at it? <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, I went to uh, Spirit Halloween, and I was buying, like, um, you know that movie Trick or Treat with, like, Sam? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the lady was like, I didn't even know that was a movie. I thought Spirit Halloween made up the character. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow. I was like, no, it's a movie. And she was like, you know, is it really scary? Because I want to watch it, but it's like, I don't want to get scared. And I was like, you know, yeah, you should give it a chance, you know. But it never even occurred to me that, you know, people didn't know where he was from. But it's like, you know, hey, if you if you want to watch it, you should. But I know I would never get mad. Like, how dare you not know? <laughs> you realize how many, how much, how productive you could be in the time that you 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 just get pissed off at something you know it's stop yeah. wasting your time on that man it really yes. <laughs> yeah but in metal it's worse uh in the metal community the metal community is also really you really feel united at concerts but especially online you know it's it's pretty toxic like um if um if we had the same mentality as the as some of the metal community we would hate each other because you prefer chopping mall over intruder. How dare you prefer another supermarket slasher over the oh other? Oh God! <laughs> yeah. How could you do that? Like, I'm like, uh, and I, I feel like I've definitely, like, when I, you know, started my Instagram, and I didn't know like every horror movie ever, and now I know like a lot. I know a lot of random obscure movies most people don't know about. Cause I just, you know, research a lot. And when people are like, I've never seen Halloween or I've never seen like, you know, a Freddy Krueger movie or something. I would like kind of catch myself being like, what do you mean you haven't seen it? <laughs> and I had to just tell myself like, Hey, it's okay. Like it doesn't make you any less of a fan if they haven't seen it. Like they don't have to see it. They don't have to like it, you know, just because it's popular or what, most people watch it's just you know, everyone's entitled to their own you know 
and not everyone has access to watch like every horror movie ever. <laughs> right, right. Or, or maybe they haven't heard of it, you know? So I still find movies that I've never heard of. And I'm just like, wow, this, you know, I'm just getting schooled right now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with, um, with Chris Rock, the comedian? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget his name because um, <laughs> I was doing this trailer reaction to the new Spiral trailer. And oh, it says, yes. from Chris Rock. And I was like, Chris Rock, no idea what that is. And that was the only oh. time I mentioned him. And that video got so oh. many dislikes, <laughs> so many hate comments because God. I said I didn't know a celebrity. Yeah. Well, I, you're young, you know. Chris Rock is kind of like... I mean, I'm almost 30 and like, you know, that's kind of my time where he was like a real popular comedian and he's yeah. still doing stuff, but a lot of, you know, people who are younger, they don't know. I even have heard of people not knowing who the Beatles are. They're like, I just thought it was a shirt that Kanye West was wearing <laughs> and I didn't know. And you're, you're kind of like, how do you not know? But at the same time, it's a, it's a total generation gap, you know? Right. So, yeah, but for me, it's also uh, um, an international difference because um, oh, yeah. the only movie I've seen he's in is like um, Madagascar 2. And I watched it like <laughs> 10 years ago, you know, so yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't look at the credits who, who voiced the zebra or whoever he's voicing, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. God. And yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he was actually, you know, his face is in the movie. So. Right, exactly. And um <laughs> um, you know, I could have known his com comedy shows, but the thing is, and I explained this in the comments as well to like these idiots, you know, for some reason pissed off because I don't know him. Um, like I'm from the Netherlands and over here we do not watch Dutch movies really because, or at least I know them because I think most of them suck. So I watch American films, you know, however, yeah. Our comedians are great. So I watch Dutch comedians. I do not watch American comedians. So really, there was no way I could have known him before Spiral. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And I saw that trailer um, yesterday because I went to the movies yesterday. And oh, really? Yeah, for like the, this was the second movie I've seen since like the whole thing happened with lockdown. Right. And so I saw that trailer and... I was like, it looks good. I don't know when we're going to get that movie <laughs> yeah. what, next year or something, but we should have gotten it by now, uh, shouldn't we? But like May this yeah, year? Yeah, it was like a kind of like indefinitely postponed. Right. And there was a one trailer that I really was like invested in. It's like, um, like some, it's called Greenland and there's like a comet coming to earth that like is gonna kill the whole planet and I love movies like to me that's like real horror because I'm just <laughs> like I don't want to mess around with <laughs> space or comets or anything there's and, nothing you can do <laughs> yeah literally nothing and you know the guy he's played by Gerard Butler he's like trying to get his family to like these bunkers in Greenland and to save them and I was like man like how long am I going to have to wait for this movie to come out? All right. Uh, next yeah. year. It was supposed to come out um, in September. And it was supposed to be like the last fall movie. Because I've just been looking at like the movie um, industry and how bad it is right now for them. And I'm so bummed about Halloween Kills. Like, <laughs> I was like, that yeah. was my, you know, the one movie I look forward to every year. There's always like, you know, one that I really get like excited for. And that was it. Obviously. Then, <laughs> yeah. And I was just, gosh. And just I wonder what they're going to do, though. Shows. Yeah, I don't know. Cause, because mm -hmm. like Halloween Kills um, probably will begin right after the 2018 movie. And I, th yeah. I think I would, at least that's what I would do as a, yeah. if, if I was the filmmaker. <laughs> Yes. It would just be the entire night of that Halloween. Mm -hmm. But what are they going to do with ends? Is it going to be like Michael's just going to be waiting there one year for the next Halloween and then attack? Or is it going to be like the first of, of November, you know? 
Which... I have no idea. Wait, like, I love the Halloween franchise, but it is, like, very jumbled. Like, <laughs> there's so many pa- – it's, like, the messiest out of any of the franchises because yeah. there's so many timelines and there's so many inconsistencies <laughs> because they all, like, were filmed – some weren't filmed to, like, 10 years later, you know? So everyone looks totally different. <laughs> and they didn't really get the same character to, like, play Michael in all of the movies. So – one walks different, one's like kind of short. <laughs> one looks like the mask is all messed up, but I, I love that franchise. But I'm like, yeah, y'all, I, I'm really hoping like Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Like, I hope it ends on a high note, you know, for the franchise. Yeah, but I, uh, I don't know if, you, if you've seen it, but I also interviewed James U. Courtney. And, um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah he was- I did see that. He was really awesome to talk to, and he, he thinks it has a positive effect on the film. So, you know, if, if it's going to be, you know, in five years, when I've seen Halloween uh, kills and ends, I'm not even going to remember that I waited one year extra, but I'm going to remember that it is a good film, you know? If yeah. I saw it this year and it would have been worse, you know, mm-hmm. then in five years, I wouldn't remember it as a worse film than we could have seen, yeah. you know? so. That's- that's what I heard that after Halloween 2018, like they immediately went to filming Halloween yeah. Kills because they wanted it like for next October. And people were like, that was kind of one of the concerns. Well, how's the quality of the movie going to be if y'all are actively like rushing to make it and edit it? And so, you know, now they've had more time. So, you know, hopefully they give us something really, really good. And, I, I like the first one. I I feel like I like it more than the average person. I think some people didn't really care for it. <laughs> um, but I liked it and I you know, I actually have a, this figure. Oh it right. was signed. I'm not sure I think it's Nick Castle that signed it. This was like a gift. You don't but even know who signed it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Nick Cat. It's so hard to tell, like, what the, who signed this, you know? Who sent it to you, though? Um, one of my, my customers from work, but he was like, I asked him, I was like, who signed this? He goes, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I got it off of, like, uh, eBay or something. And so I had to, like, look up people's signatures, like, to try to compare, like, I'm- who is this? I'm pretty sure it's Nick Castle. I think so too. I would think so. Yeah. But I mean, I, otherwise, I it. Figure. Yeah, that it's awesome. Right here, the one with the the human jack o' lantern. I I really want that mask. There's like a really good mask of it from Trick or Treat Studios. And really, wow, that's yeah, awesome. It would wow. be cool to put like as like a Halloween decoration or something. Right. <laughs> I'm already decorating for Halloween, even though I don't know if we'll get trick-or-treaters. Right. But do y'all have Halloween over there? No, Is absolutely it- not really, no. actually, no. <laughs> everyone's like, no, not Halloween. And everyone's posting these memes now, like, um, <laughs> like, like it said as a caption, like you shouldn't be preparing for Halloween. It's two months early. And then you see someone carving a pumpkin, you know, you see all these memes yeah. now and I'm like, I'm not even preparing for Halloween on Halloween because we don't celebrate it here. Oh, gosh. I know. I've, I've never really been a big, like, Halloween person until, like, recently. Because I was like, I just want to do something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, crazy right now. So just an excuse to, like, go out and shop and decorate and everything. Right. But I personally am a big Christmas person. <laughs> <laughs> That's my like guilty pleasure. I love I, Christmas as well, though. It's so I just feel like all the lights and everyone's so happy. <laughs> well, un- unless you go to Walmart on on Black Friday, then oh yeah, <laughs> it'll be a different story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for the TVs, you know. <laughs> and I have a, such a small TV, and people will like. I used to get comments like, "How can you watch it on a that small TV?" I was like, leave my TV alone. <laughs> I wanted a TV like that. I really want a TV like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of hard to like get at a good price. Um, there's like a bunch on eBay, but they're like, oh, it's a 
hundred dollars just to ship it or whatever. Right. So I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what would you say is your uh, favorite franchise, like, um, like horror franchise? You know, you got the big three. Maybe, yeah. maybe you even enjoy one besides the big three. Who knows? Oh, I probably would say Friday the Thirteenth is my favorite franchise. But I, like, aside from the big three, I have to go with Scream. Like that is like oh, yeah. my. I aside from Scream Three, like which I like, but I don't love. I, I hated that when I watched it. <laughs> yeah, it's I I I can kind of like find things I like about it, but for the most part, it just kind of annoys me. And like the twist, I'm just like I roll. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's it's um, I watched it for the first time when I was feeling pretty sick, and that movie just made me feel sicker because it sucked <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah, I. It was definitely kind of a letdown, but I mean, there's only four movies in the Scream franchise and yeah. that's like the worst one to me. That's like the only one I don't really enjoy. So, and we're supposed to get a Scream 5 next year. I'm very excited. I really liked Scream 4. So, I, I think Ghostface is, you know, he's such a good, like, a good villain. Like, you don't see his face, you know, he could kind of be anyone. Yeah. And to me, that's really scary. And I, I think um, Sydney Prescott, she's just such a good final girl. Like, you know, I, I love her story of like becoming a victim, kind of like Laurie Strode, you know, like a victim and then kind of taking back her power and like, you know, basically saying like, I ain't going to take this anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's what I love about horror so much. Um because you have you have like female presentation but it's not like shoved into your face you know what i mean like yeah, action movies are like it's it's the only thing that's interesting about the movie now is that it's a female lead and they just shove it into your face it's like female um, heroes female heroes but with horror it's so natural and and i love it because of that you know like yeah, sydney is such a strong character but it it it's not shown in in the marketing you know like like mm -hmm. a strong female lead or anything you know it's because that's how i feel with um you know with male heroes you never have that in a marketing either so oh, why should yeah. females have that you know because then it kind yeah, of waters that it, it waters it down for me personally yeah that's why i, I love horror movies so much you know oh uh, yeah i mean the final girl trope you know the very rarely have we ever had like a final boy trope i right. think like Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two is probably <laughs> that's the like only the one that pops into my mind as well. Yeah, there's like a couple of um, horror movies where like the boyfriend and the final girl like make it. Oh yeah, but you know Friday usually the 13th, he's Jason yeah. takes Manhattan. I mean Choppy Mall. I mean the guy's like yeah. knocked out and Kelly Maroney like saves the day all by herself, and then after the robots are killed, he's like, "Oh, I'm still alive." <laughs> Intruder. <laughs> Things are not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's just like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, and it's like women just, we just rule <laughs> the right. horror movies. And it's, it's so cool because it's not, they usually don't win by like their physical strength. It's all their like, their mental capacity to yeah. like, kind of like in Friday the 13th part two, like Ginny, she uses like her psychology to defeat yeah Jason. that's such an interesting scene yeah and you know that's how she's like be able to survive is that she was just able to outsmart him you know you can never outrun him but you can outsmart him <laughs> <laughs> and so and i love that franchise so much it's it's so good <laughs> yeah yeah but that's what uh the new black christmas didn't work for me because that movie had that like in the marketing everywhere you know which then is just, yes. it, it, you know, it loses its value. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I liked it, but I definitely felt like at times it was like, it's very like SJW and. Right. Um, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't really want to hear about that stuff when I'm watching a horror movie. <laughs> I'm You're supposed to, to get like, me out of the world's bullshit, not. Yes. <laughs> 
that's exactly I'm like I don't want to you know I'll go on Twitter if I want to hear all that stuff. <laughs> I'm like that's why I stay away from Twitter because <laughs> yeah not for me <laughs> such a toxic place definitely it's it's crazy how some apps are like you know better than others just because I mean it's all about what you want like I feel like Facebook I never really go on Facebook I'll like check in and I'll see like your Facebook group and stuff and, right but for the most part I don't really because <laughs> I have a lot of family so they're always posting like politics or something <laughs> I, I don't want to hear about that <laughs> I'm like okay log out <laughs> Biden 2020 Trump 2020 yeah I, I don't care <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I really don't care. <laughs> I just want to, if you're posting what you're watching that night, I'm, I'll am i care. <laughs> other than that, I'm like, yeah, not interested. <laughs> yeah, like, rule number four of my group is, um, I, like, um, I don't want to hear your political or religious views. Keep them out of my group. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Because, oh, God, there's, like, um, killer flicks. Like, they're a really great Facebook oh, group. Oh, yeah. But every now and then somebody will like bring something really weird into the like comments and I'm just like, what? <laughs> this has nothing to do with the movie. Why are you talking about this? Like right. really awkward and so yeah. And Instagram I never get I I rarely ever see anything political or, you know, real real deep on there. Right. <laughs> I'm like For the better I don't have, Yeah. I'm like, I don't really want to have an existential conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's a lot, you know. But, yeah. So, what have you uh, been watching the last couple of uh, days or weeks? Ooh, I wa last night, I watched this movie called Unhinged with Russell Crowe. I don't know if you know who that is. He was in, like, Gladiator. Yeah, I know Russell Crowe, but I unhinged that sounds so familiar but i <laughs> i just can't i i didn't even see i don't actually have like cable at my house so i never see any like trailers i'll just see them um like pop up on like youtube so i didn't even see a trailer my son's dad told me about this movie and it's like a kind of like a revenge movie russell crowe plays like a crazy guy and he's like road raging after this <laughs> one woman and it was like, it's very like gory and kind of feels like um, Final Destination because there's all these like car crashes. And stuff. <laughs> but it was it was a like an entertaining movie. It wasn't like that like super you know great, but it was like very entertaining to watch because awesome. there's a lot of one liners, a lot. Of a lot of like, oh right <laughs> yeah just really impossible things happening you know but and then i just uh right now i'm watching house of wax the one from 2005 oh yeah I, i've heard of that one um yeah but i haven't seen it yet is it any it, good so far i like a lot of people don't like it um there's like a big thing with like kind of early 2000s horror i love that shit <laughs> I, I love it too and I feel like some of my favorite movies like um the Black Christmas remake uh the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003 like I feel like there's like a it's a really good kind of time for horror and there was a lot of remakes around that the early 2000s oh yeah so but they were pretty well done and House of Wax is actually a remake of like an old um vincent price movie i think but very loosely <laughs> loose remake you know yeah and it was just take a concept and, and do something original that's usually what the yeah. best remakes are made of you know yes and people actually say that this movie is more of a remake of tourist trap so even though it's called house of wax it kind of has like some tourist trap like vibes so it's like a wax museum and there's like a creepy guy who's, you know, killing all the friend group off and in like the wax museums are, are kind of creepy when you think about them. Like everything's very still. It's made out of wax. Right. The people, you know, made out of wax. It's like um, when I was younger, I used to be terrified of mannequins. 
like at the <laughs> department store. I was so convinced <laughs> that they would like move or there was like people inside of them. <laughs> and so I would just, and when I think you're really little, everything's so big around you. You know, you're constantly looking up. And so everything's <laughs> so weird. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I, I definitely really like it. And um, what else have I been watching? I was, oh, I was watching a, an anime, Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that one. I heard the live action one from Netflix was really shitty. Yeah, with, uh, I forgot who was in it. Willem Dafoe, I think. Is he but, in it? Yeah. yeah, he was in the live act. He plays like the, the demon guy, the I don't know how to pronounce his name, but yeah, I, I like um, some horror anime, just like, just watching it. It's pretty cool, but it, you know, I try to watch a lot of different horror things. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. Just to see, you know. You'd probably go crazy if you, if you kept watching movies like Maniac Cop or Frankenhooker and stuff like that. <laughs> I was actually thinking about watching Maniac Cop today. But oh, that's my, one of my favorites. I love, I have it over here somewhere over there. Yeah, I, I can see the spine from here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I watched um, part two and the guy who's in it, I think it's Robert Czar. He's like the detective in part two. Oh. And I have, yeah, I do know who I'm talking about. Robert D. Czar or something like that. Robert Davi, right? Is that his name? Something like that, yes. I know Robert you had like... You had talked about it, right? In like a video? I think something. so. Yeah. And um, I had put on my Instagram, I was like, I love the first Maniac Cop, but I didn't really like the second one. Really? And the, the actor actually commented on my Instagram and like roasted me. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> the detective guy? <laughs> yeah. I don't know where my second copy is, but I know Robert yeah. Zadar. Um, Some, yes, it, Robert Zadar is the maniac cop, but um, I think the the detective guy is like Robert Davi or something. He, oh, it, it was Robert Czar. I remember that from my Instagram, because I remember I looked and I was like, I like you, like I love your work, <laughs> and I did just to get <laughs> roasted by him. I was like, and a lot of people were like, how could you not like? um maniac cop 2 and i just didn't like it because it, it's more like action than horror you know yeah a lot of I can... like, uh, blowing stuff up and fire and explosions yeah <laughs> and i love this one because um bruce campbell tom atkins the... yeah but the mood and atmosphere is so good in both movies though yeah they are this one i feel is more of like a mystery because you're kind of like is bruce campbell the maniac cop like right they kind of make it seem um kind of like in uh i think child's play like you're like is andy really the one doing <laughs> this stuff like is it really gonna be the doll you know like and the theme song yeah. that was done by the by the same composer from from maniac um it's so oh, chilling wow. like the like the little whistle going on during the film i love mm -hmm. that i love God, that maniac is another god i watched that i showed it to my husband and he had never seen it before and he was like Phew. like he was like this movie is intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like yeah it's it's a really intense movie i bought the this from blue underground blue underground is a really man, good man i wanted to buy the one like last it's, month but i didn't end up buying it but i want to get that one soon expensive i saw it on amazon for like 40 dollars, and i had it in my cart just finally went down to like 27 dollars or something but yeah like it's like like this is beautiful to me this makes the price like worth it you know yeah it also has a soundtrack and, on cd and yeah and it has like a, a booklet and everything and yeah blue like, underground is actually accompanied by the director of maniac and uh, maniac cop no way yeah 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 because i can i feel like who like you can tell like somebody like obviously loves movies and they know what like collectors want you know yeah and they have like the cover that like the lenticular cover so beautiful <laughs> yes it's so cool i this is like 
one of the coolest releases I had. And, you know, I used to not really buy Blu-ray because I just wanted, like, tapes. But, I mean, at, at this point, they're kind of, like, the same price. VHS are right. not really like, that cheap anymore. <laughs> and so now I've just been getting into, like, the collector editions of Blu-rays. And that one is beautiful. I, I love Maniac. I want a poster of Maniac with, like, the oh, cross yeah. shot. <laughs> I just think it's just so funny and the head, you know. <laughs> Have you seen the remake of Maniac? The Oh no, the I haven't. Blood? I really want to check that one out. You should and let me know what you think cuz I, I kind of like don't like it, but a lot of people do. Yeah, a lot of people seem to love it. Yeah. Elijah Wood is definitely like a nut. <laughs> He's just he plays a really good like creepy he creepy freaked guy. Me the- you really freaked me the fuck out in, in Sin City when I watched that, like, like years ago. <laughs> I have not seen that. I should. Oh, yeah. The His scene is so that. creepy. Really? I always yeah. wanted to watch it because I know Jessica Alba was in it. And she's like, oh, a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's, like, that part of her in the trailer. And I was like, I want to watch that, but not with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> not during that scene. He'll have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but... Yeah, I need to, I'm so bad at watching stuff that's, like, not horror. <laughs> yeah, me too, because then it's, it's like, I can't really post about this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I watched some, like, comedy the other day with my husband. He picked it out, and it was from the guy, of like, Keenan and Peel. Um, they're, like, two, com- two comedians, and it was actually really good. It was, like, about a cat, like, a <laughs> little cat. And, but it was like a, like very meta and like, kind of like an action movie, but just like poking fun at everything. Right. But I was like, yeah, I'm not going to post about this. Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody cares. No one's then, coming to me for a comedy recommendation. You'll just see like 25 people unfollowing you for, you know. <laughs> oh my God, I know. I, I'm like, if you look at your your insights on Instagram, it's crazy, like, you know, you, how many people will and follow you, like, after, yeah. you know, it's like, and I know, for me, I always have, like, more people follow me than unfollow, so I'm like, oh, I'm doing really well, like, people like me, and then I look, and it's like, oh, uh, you know, so many people followed you, but, like, a hundred people unfollowed you, too, <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> like well all right but bye-bye yeah you're like oh okay but um I I, when I first read Instagram I was so confused because there would be like the people who would follow you to for you to follow them back and then once you did they would just unfollow you (laughs) oh that's such a I hate that I hate when people do that yeah and I was so confused because I was like was this a mistake did they press the wrong button? <laughs> like, and then um, I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's just a normal thing. Like People just tricked you into following them. <laughs> yeah, I would never think to do that, you know. That would never cross my mind because I'm like, why would you follow someone you don't want to, you know? Right. So what's the point? <laughs> but yeah, in- Instagram is... Uh, it, it's re- it's a really funny <laughs> place to be sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's I also like, don't get why people care so much about their their following, the, yeah. like the amount they're following. If if yes. I, I don't I really def- follow new accounts, though. If a horror related account follows me, I'll look at their account. If I like it, I'll follow them back. You know, uh, even if they yeah. have thirty followers or or thirty thousand followers, you know, I'll just follow yeah. them back if I like what I see. Yeah, when I first started, like, getting, like, more active on there, um, I think I had, like, maybe 2,000 followers, and there was, like, really big accounts that had, like, you know, 10,000 followers or 20,000, and I was, like, like, when I get there, I'm gonna be, like, one of the cool kids, finally, (laughs) and then, like, you know, now I have, like, I I think almost 18,000 and it's like, you know, it really doesn't matter how many followers you have, you know, it's, it, it's, I think people kind of 
hype it up more than it really is, you know? Yeah. Because um, at the end of the day, like, you know, I, I just want to talk about movies and I have like my friends that I made on there. And um, I, I think though, like the way it's set up is, you know, you're, you, if you have a lot of followers, like, like you're more people will like try to interact with you or like try to, you know, share your stuff. Yeah. Um, and the smaller accounts, they're like, I don't want nothing to do with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that's such a bad mentality to have. Because yeah. Some people get really upset. They're like, you know, nobody wants to talk to me and I'm, you know, I try to follow like as much people as I can back because I, I hate seeing accounts that have like a hundred thousand followers and then like they only follow like a hundred people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, don't you get tired of seeing the same a hundred people posts? Like, but they just want that big like difference because that's look at how important I am. I'm only following a yeah. hundred people, but <laughs> ten thousand people want to follow me. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I'm like, that's you, so ugly. <laughs> And I just, if, you know, if they're not an actor or, or like an actual celebrity, I hate it yeah. even more because then I'm like, you're not a celebrity, dude. So stop pretending to be one. Yes. Or people get like the blue check, you know, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Who are you? I guess anyone can get the blue check. I think you just need to send in your, like your driver's license or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. No, you need to be, I think you need to be like in an article. Like there needs to be an oh, article about something you did or something. My parents um they really didn't like me watching scary movies when i was younger my grandpa would let me because he liked them but um uh, i'm hispanic so like i feel like a lot of hispanic like the culture uh we're very religious you know right. so my grandmas and my mom they would tell me like if you watch a scary movie the devil is gonna come out and get you <laughs> and i would like really he's really gonna come out and get me well, if he and, actually you know, did, you turn out fine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just like that kind of fear, you know, and um, it's just like, wow, okay, I guess I will watch. <laughs> but you know, as I got older, I just, I would just like hide my movies from my parents because they did not like, they didn't appreciate. That <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like, I don't want this stuff in my house. This devil stuff. <laughs> this devil stuff that's like something you can air in a movie you know like the creep yeah, show opening definitely, yeah it's definitely he's definitely like the, the tom atkins and creep show <laughs> <laughs> i don't want this in my house you know <laughs> but i i never pressured my son to watch movies he would just see it when i would come in and i would like try to pause it and he would be like no wait like i want to watch that what is that what are you doing and his favorite movie is the thing and choppy mall and killer clowns from outer space like those are his favorite i was like well you have good taste so. <laughs> i'm like i you know you want to make movies when you're older and that would be cool a mom and son you know duo right. <laughs> that would be very cool and i always joke with my husband i'm like when i die you can give <laughs> give him my collection <laughs> i'm like some of this stuff is worth a lot of money, so make sure you give those <laughs> jokes, like, sell it all. <laughs> but then it will probably be even more. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's, there always will be, the, like, nerds, you know? So I definitely nerd out over so many things, and I'll right, tell you. Right, and that's, like... that's what I hate, because um, <laughs> it's also with, with the metal community. Just because it's a small genre or a small community mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's dying, and everyone's always like, oh, horror is dying, horror is dead, or metal is dead, metal is dying. But, like, we can watch um, a romance film, or at least we won't enjoy it as much as, as we do a horror film, right? Mm -hmm. So, because of that, it will never die. Because till the day I die, <laughs> I will just keep on watching <laughs> horror movies, yeah, you know? Yeah, no. I think I've, like, my, some of my favorite horror movies I've seen easily uh, over a hundred times, you know? Exactly. I'll never get tired of watching them. And, you know, movies from back when I was, like, in high school, like, over 10 years ago and um my mom would always be like it's just a phase i'm like well it's been like over 10 years so it's not really a phase anymore <laughs> it's just I what i like and you know it's cool more kids i think are like getting into it like the friday the 13th game 
Um, oh yeah. I, a lot of people really like that. And um, I've been playing uh, Dead by Daylight and you have like Leatherface, I think, or, like Michael Myers and Ghostface. Yeah. So I'm like, it's cool to see like horror is just, I think, expanding to different from just movies, you know, the, the shirts, uh, the games, like, I would say it's, it's not, um, it's not, uh, you know, mainstream, but I guess it's more socially acceptable now. Yeah, no, exactly. I used to get made fun of in school for liking, um, like zombies and stuff and, um, <laughs> zombie movies. And now it's, now it's a little different because if I tell people I like that stuff, they'll just walk away from me because they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of people get very, my mom is like that. She gets very scared of like, <laughs> and I get scared too, like during certain movies, but it, it, it's, you know, it really depends on a movie. Um, I can't really, I don't know what movie was the last one that really scared me, but I think it's always like such a good surprise though when you watch something and it really like kind of keeps you up at night. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't have that anymore really with movies now. I used yeah. to have that as a kid. I, I, but nowadays I really, I mean, I want to be scared and, and I want movies yeah. to keep me up at night, but they just don't anymore. So now I just enjoy horror. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am a scaredy cat. Like, um, my we were playing a hide and seek the other day and my son was hiding in the closet and he never hides there so i didn't think he was going to be there and like i opened the door not expecting to see him and of course he was there and i was like so i had to cry and i got so scared <laughs> i was just like screaming and then like the other day my husband he like came up behind me and surprised me and my first reaction was to like go like this <laughs> I was like, well, at least if you were Jason, I would have been prepared to hit you. Right. Because <laughs> I was like already like, okay, I'm about to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Full karate but, yeah. pose ready. <laughs> yes, all the horror movies have paid off. You know? Right. Right, for God. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I feel like the alien movies are a perfect example of, of what horror I love and, yes. and, and what I hate because – alien and aliens are still so much fun you know like the characters mm -hmm. are having fun together and then they're being killed right mm -hmm. i've said this over and over again um so people <laughs> people who watch me often will be like oh there he goes again talking about <laughs> what he likes and doesn't like um <laughs> well, but basically the channel you know <laughs> right <laughs> thank you loyal viewers i'm sorry to piss you <laughs> off again <laughs> um <laughs> But basically, I love, like, in the first one and the second one, the characters having so much fun, and then they're being killed. Mm -hmm. And then in the third one, they're not having fun, and they're being killed. You know, it's just depressing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The one where they're, like, in the prison or whatever. Right. I'm like, uh, yeah, that one I've, I've seen a couple times, and it's just, like, mm, the, not, my, not my favorite. <laughs> you were so happy that, like, um, I forget their names, but, like, the Newt, yeah, Newt, like the little oh, girl and, and the guy survive. And then they're killed off in the, the first five minutes. What the fuck? I hate that. Kind of like a Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. Like the... the oh, yeah. Like the Rachel. ending. Yeah. And it's like, why bring her back? Or like, you know, Lori, when she's back in um, Halloween Resurrection. And uh, they kill her off the first, like, five minutes. <laughs> I was like, why bother to bring her back, get her hopes up, and then, like, give them, like, a shitty death, you know? <laughs> She's in the poster. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That movie is, uh, I like it for what it is, but it's such a train wreck. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it's uh, Buster Rhymes, and he's like, uh, hey, Mikey, or something <laughs> like, the kung fu kick, and... <laughs> I was like, I'm genuinely confused right now. <laughs> yeah, because especially with those franchises, it's like, like with uh, also with Alien Resurrection, you know, when oh, you're yeah. watching that film, you're like, okay, I'm kind of entertained by this, but it's, it's really, it's really shitty, but I'm entertained, you know, but then you realize yeah. this is the same franchise as the 1970s masterpiece Alien. 
Mm-hmm. How is it, have I, these movies evolved? <laughs> yeah, and I feel like the like Covenant and you know Prometheus. I feel like they're trying to like move the franchise into like a more like like I don't know. A, it's like a little bit more smarter horror. Um, they put a lot of like you know other like oh is there a god and where do we come from as like humans and then like not a whole lot of aliens though you know so right. like well, where's the aliens at you know well, I, I do enjoy these films a lot but i definitely get where you're coming from um i, yeah. I actually watched alien covenant and prometheus yesterday um oh, cool. yeah i love these movies i still do um even though i get everyone's complaints i still enjoy them just so much <laughs> They're um, very, we actually watched the, it was like a two hour special feature on Prometheus. I bought like the uh, special cool. edition just for the special features. And we watched it and like how they made the ship and, you know, all of this. It was, they really put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. My and, biggest complaint is definitely just like the CGI. I mean, it looks yeah. so <laughs> awful, especially in Covenant. Like the, the yeah. alien design is great, but how... How does the CGI look worse? How does the alien look worse than the seventies one? You know. Like, yeah, exactly. The one with the from the seventies. God, that movie when I first saw it, I was so scared. Like right. the scene where the guys like in, you know, they're like, "It's right behind you" or whatever. It's right next to you, and then you just see like the you know from the flare. His, <laughs> oh God, it's so scary. <laughs> I still get very uncomfortable when I watch that. Because it's just so, you know, I don't know. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and I just remember screaming. <laughs> I was so freaked out. And, you know, they did a really good job of, like, kind of showing you. Kind of like Jaws, you know. They don't show too much right away. And just, you know, little here and there. And so when you finally do see it, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, and, and that's that's why aliens work so much because it it wouldn't be scary anymore because you already know what the creature looks like from the first one. So yeah. then it's then it's great that they made it an action movie and they just show the aliens and now it's just aliens yeah. being blasted everywhere and <laughs> their acid blood destroying humans, you know, which is just so that awesome. That always freaked me out. I I actually really like Alien versus Predator. Oh yeah, and me too. It's just cool to see like the, the acid blood and they're like really weird looking creatures. So and yeah. I just hate that that movie is PG thirteen. Oh yeah. It's like, oh god. <laughs> I feel like horror movies like they should be rated R. Like yeah. if you're gonna have, you know, acid blood, like you you know, show <laughs> show some gore, you know. Yeah, there's actually sure. a novelization for that one. I think that one has a little bit more gore and detail oh. into like the deaths and stuff. Um, uh-huh. But it's just something w- where it's like, this is one of the biggest crossover horror movies. And you're going to have a PG-13. Are you kidding me? Uh-huh. You know, even yeah. though I enjoy it so much, I, I rewatched it recently as well because I've been going over the Alien and Predator franchise. Um, but it's just like, come on, really? <laughs> Like every single movie in these franchises have been rated R, and this one is gonna be PG thirteen. Yeah, I mean, Predator, like the first one with like Arnold, like that is a hard R movie. There's yeah. a lot of like cursing, a lot of like you know, blood and stuff. It's a very intense movie, and yeah, I feel like a PG thirteen is kind of like a slap in the face because I I know <laughs> yeah. the only reason they do that is like to try to make more money. Yeah. Because, like, oh, more people will see this movie if it's PG-13. And yeah, but to us horror fans, it just feels like a backstab, too, you know? Like, yeah. I'm like, it was wrong. You know, there's, yeah, so there's some movies that I'm like, they don't really need the, um, like, the nudity or, like, the curse scene or whatever. But, like, I feel like most horror movies, like, they need, like, the, the kills. Like, we don't want to see it off mm-hmm. screen. We want to yeah. see what's happening and that's like partly why I really love Intruder is like they never shy away. Oh like, no. They're like, no, we're gonna show it to you and we're gonna do it like really well, you know. And most yeah, I saw a behind now, the scenes um photo from Intruder that actually the actress sent to me. And um 
it was like a photo of the the head cut in half, you know, and it yeah. looks it's it was just there in broad light, and it just looks identical as it does in the movie, and mm -hmm. so they didn't have to hide it with quick cuts or or very shady lighting or anything, you know. Yeah. No. Exactly. Because yeah, it's that's why I just love that movie and that that head scene. That's like. But one, I'll rewatch that part like over and over because I'm just like, how did they do that? Like it's so right. realistic looking. It's so good and yeah, and for PG thirteen horror now, I feel like it's like um, real teeny like bopper kind of um, like Blumhouse, you know, a lot of jump scares. Yeah, um, like the uh, Happy Death Day movies, you know. Yeah, I enjoy I those, but you know. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't a fan. I was like, mm. I, I want to like it, but I'm just, it's too, like, comedy, I, I think, for me. It's too, like, silly. So, there's actually another one, uh, Freaky. It's like a Friday, uh, a Freaky Friday slash Happy Death Day, where she, like, wakes up in the body of her, of this serial killer, and she's, like, a high school blonde girl. And it's like from the people who made Happy Death Day, I think. It sounds like so, an interesting concept, but yeah, you no. Know. I think Vince Vaughn is in it. He's like the serial killer, and like, yeah, it, it actually looks pretty good. I definitely want to see it when it comes out. And um, I don't know what it's rated, but that one looks really good. I know. I think they made a Happy Death Day Part Two, didn't they? Yeah, that was like Happy Death Day to you. You know, they yeah, did that yeah. cheesy I thing. Think it, I, I didn't see that one, but maybe we I just, should. <laughs> we just know the next one is going to be Happy Death Day, and the three is like in the E from death, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, God, how much, you know, it's the same day. I get it. <laughs> but it I happened mean, again. It you know, yeah. I mean, at least it was something new, you know, like a new idea. Yeah. It wasn't just like a ghost. We got a lot of like, um, like I like The Conjuring, but. I like in you know Annabelle, but at the same time, I like like real killers more. You know, I'm yeah. not really that like, you know. I I like the old like slasher movies, so I like to see somebody actually like going crazy. Right. <laughs> Revenge about a store. I'm just crazy about this store. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that part is awesome. I really <laughs> never, like the one. I need a, a good um, intruder shirt <laughs> oh yeah i don't know who, who makes one but i definitely need one of those yeah that movie is so perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's my favorite for a reason yeah i like slasher pepper and when you're first on youtube um you're doing like a bunch of like intruder like if you wrote like to rewrite intruder yeah i did like a intru writing intruder too like as, yes. a, as a 30 years later thing like halloween you know yes i was like oh that's such a cool idea like i really like that yeah i still need to finish that but i, I don't know if i will because the, um danny hicks he passed away like a couple oh. of months ago yeah that was that sucked so now yeah. it's kind of like I knew my idea wasn't going to be made, but now I know for sure it's not going to be made. So <laughs> why even bother? <laughs> yeah. Right. Just do it for yourself, you know. And right. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. Like his, his son, you know. Right. That killer son is back for more. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyways, is there anything uh, you would like to add to the video? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah make sure to follow me at cc gabby louisa over on my instagram and you can subscribe to my youtube channel they'll all be linked in the description so make sure you check it out um thank you guys so much for watching this crazy long uh video and um <laughs> we'll see you guys next time see ya bye <laughs> you're pissing me off roger it's gonna be wild.